Now I have received a question about energetical protection and specifically about the art of stalking. And um, one of the statements here is that movement can make you invisible. And that is true, but also being immobile can make you invisible. It's very much about how you do things. In general, if there is nothing happening, no energy is moving, you attract very little attention. But if you are naturally a strong and powerful person, there will always be a lot of power circulating in your body. So one of the ways to hide yourself is in a way to turn off your energy body, to uh, decrease the size of your chakras, to decrease the energy flow uh, of your life force. And while you're in such a state, you're of course very vulnerable because you have no special powers, no talents, nothing else. You'll just be just like anybody else on the street. But because you're just like anybody else on the street, you also don't attract any attention. And this is often used as an infiltration technique. Many people will seem to be just a nobody uh, with no special powers. And this way they can infiltrate into organizations, into groups, and gain a lot of knowledge and understanding without attracting any attention whatsoever. They're effectively below the radar. The art of moving is a little bit more tricky because rather than hiding what you are, you put additional layers of being on top of yourself. And it is a little bit like, um, you could say, in the Mission Impossible, where people have these very lifelike masks. Everybody thinks you're one person, you tear off the mask, you turn out to be somebody else, you turn out, rip off another mask, and you turn out to be maybe a double agent, <laughs> not even the person they thought you were be beneath the mask. So having many layers of being, many layers of personality, this is a very good technique. Um, so if you um, yeah, learn how to make glamours, I think this is very nice. Uh, one of the less nice things you can do with glamours is also to make a glamour of yourself and to put this on somebody else. So that the people who are tracking you or attacking you will think they have found you and they will start beating up somebody else while you yourself slip away. That is a rather well, unfair thing to do, but it is an effective and occasionally necessary thing uh, to complete a mission. Another thing you can do is to alter your energy body, because people are generally looking for who they think you are, which is usually human. Um, and you can, in a way, use the power of the wild man or the wild woman to transform your energy body into that of an animal or of a tree or of a stone or whatever. And it is not necessarily less powerful, but it will give you a very altered state of perception, an altered state of consciousness. But yeah, people who are in a way prepared to fight against human are often not prepared to fight against the mountain or know how to handle um, a puma <laughs> because your vulnerabilities will be very different, your weapons will be very different. So by changing yourself continuously, uh, it is very difficult for them to control the fight, to control the conflict because you're always doing something unexpected. And also you will not reveal your true nature, your true power by constantly shifting. So shifting is a very powerful technique to use. Um, and you can use it for stalking, but you can also use it for combat itself. One other thing you can do is to hide in somebody else's structures. Um, so you can amplify somebody else's energy who's close by and by them making them really big, you're in a way uh, hidden by the glare of the other person's energy. 
that a person is seen as the leader, as the boss, as the great magician or whatever, while you yourself fade into the background. And you can use this person or even that person's energy body as a puppeteer. So you fight through them <laughs> and while you yourself stay in the shadows. And of course this is best done with a person who is volunteering for that, who is willing to be the figurehead, to be in a way the energetic double who gets assassinated while you complete your mission, either using them as a decoy or using them as a manifestation of your own power. Um, it is not often that you get into a situation where something like that is called for. Um, and it is of course a very great sacrifice which you're asking of that person. But occasionally it can be worth it. It can really be worth it. So consider all these options and also be creative because I've shared some things but there's probably many times more techniques and tricks you can use in stalking and I myself am not the greatest stalker in the world not by a long shot stalking is really not my type of art so try to find good stalkers and see if you can learn from them but also realize that stalking is a path just like dreaming is a path and the two are difficult to combine. Either you are, in a way, looking for other dimensions and you are, in a way, not focusing on having a perfect skill with your own energy body, but rather developing energy bodies in higher worlds, in other worlds, so you can act in these other realities. This is the art of dreaming, of making you a multidimensional being. But because your energy is spread out over many dimensions, it is not focused into one locus. And to be a great stalker, your power needs to be focused. You cannot be thinking of anything else. You cannot be dreaming about. You need to have all your energy here to be as aware as possible, to be as powerful as possible, to be as skilled and as fast as possible. So being a stalker and being a dreamer are, in a way, a little bit opposite disciplines. So, stalking has its price, just like dreaming has its risks. And you need to weigh these very carefully and develop a path, a mix between stalking and dreaming, which is optimal for yourself.